guys what's up i'm ayana and welcome to my channel excuse how my hair is i had to put it some type of way so that is not in my face and excuse my lisp because i got braces okay but <laughs> hey i'm gonna be showing you guys how i load my car hauling trailer truck whatever and um yeah stay tuned so first and foremost, I just want to say there really is no right or wrong way to load your truck. Everybody loads it differently. Main objective, the main goal is to get everything to fit. Make sure you're not hitting nothing and um, make sure you make height. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you guys how I load my truck. We have a total of nine cars or nine vehicles today. I already loaded up my first vehicle. It's a pickup truck. It's a Tacoma. Um, I will show you guys that. It is dark, so I do apologize for the lighting. But um, yeah, I'm about to pick up my second vehicle. We have a RAV4. We have a lot of a lot of good vehicles going on the truck today. So um, I just want to tell you guys, I have a nine vehicle Stinger. There are different types of car hauling trucks. I have a Stinger and it is 75 feet long, okay? So if you're into car hauling, you know what the hell I'm talking about. But yeah, let's go, let's get into it. <laughs> Alright guys, so this is my first vehicle. We have a Tacoma. It looks pretty high. It's not over 14 feet, I'll tell you that. So guys, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load that vehicle onto here. Now, you could put that vehicle forward. I don't think people really put it backwards. I really don't load anything on here backwards unless it is a pickup truck for the most part. And I have another pickup truck that's going to be on a trailer. That's when I load my vehicle backwards. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that up forward and strap it down. Now these are the type of bars that you use when strapping down your vehicles. You always wanna put four straps in your vehicles just to make it safe and secure. I know a lot of drivers only use two, but personally, I use four. So next, we are gonna lift this vehicle up so that we can um, so that we can load under the vehicle. Hey y'all, it's editing Ayana. So I just wanna, I'll probably be in and out this video. So when you are setting up your trailer to load your first vehicle on your head rack, a lot of drivers usually don't move the decks at all until their second car is loaded. In other words, the car that I just loaded, it would still be in the air and people would usually keep it in the air and they would tie it down in the air. Yeah, I don't do that. But I'm just saying, that is something you can do the vehicle. But before we lift the vehicle up, we're gonna move this down here and connect it to here. So let me show you how to do that. So lever 10 is to move that bridge up and this is to extend it in and out. So here we go. We're gonna lift up. We're gonna lift up 10, bring it in. And then we're gonna bring it down. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna slide this out a little bit so that when we lift up this car, it doesn't hit that thing right there. <laughs> Major, major, major thing when car hauling. Always pin your decks because you never want your deck to fall on you or on a vehicle. So you pin it to stop that from happening. Okay, so now we're gonna load a vehicle in under here. And let me show you. So these are drop pockets. I have an SUV that I am loading here. So because I have an SUV that I'm loading here, I drop my pockets. The reason why I drop my pockets is so that I can bring my height down. You really don't want to load over 14 feet. Now, if I had a sedan that I was loading here, 
I can lift this up and it'll be straight, both of them. But I have an SUV, so I'm gonna drop it. You can also maneuver these ramps as well, up and down. Let's go ahead and get our SUV and load it up. Also guys, another major tip when you get into the car hauling industry, make sure you inspect the hell out of your cars because you don't want a damage that you do not do, whether they are new or used, okay? Oh, wait a damn minute, this Highlander? Baby, you see the red seats, girl? Okay, okay, Toyota, stop playing. Am I in a Lexus? Stop playing with me. <laughs> I'm in a Lexus. This ain't no Highlander. This is a, this is a, <laughs> oh, goddamn, LX. Don't play with me. Okay, guys, so when you are backing up your vehicles, it really depends on how you are personally. You can use your mirror to look back there, or you can stick out your head. I know when I first started, I used the mirror a lot, but now I don't trust the mirror. I stick on my head. But let me give you guys a quick little tip. So you guys see each row of um, holes, right? Now these rows of holes help you when loading your vehicle to make sure you don't go in the middle because you only have so much space, right? So with a SUV, right? Typically with an SUV, I like my tire to cover, to at least cover this hole. If when I'm backing up and I see too much of this, this row of holes, that means I am too far over there and I need to fix it or I'm gonna end up going in the middle. Now, if you were to have like a sedan, a Corolla or something, you wanna see one hole. You don't, you don't want to cover this hole if you have like a small Corolla because nine times out of 10, you are too far over here. When you have a sedan, you want to see at least one row of holes on your left and on your right. So I know it's kind of crazy on how I'm explaining it, but if you get into car hauling, you'll know what I mean. You want to pick, if you got a big ass like Dodge Ram, your tire wants to at least be out here. Forget the holes, it's gonna cover all of them. Your tire wants to be at least out here. The biggest goal is to not go in the middle because it is hard to get you out. But um, we're gonna go ahead and back up this bad boy. So let's get into it. Always make sure when you are backing up your vehicle, you put your mirrors in because this thing will knock your mirrors straight off. And just another note, these holes are throughout the whole trailer. So that um, that's a tip to what I was telling you guys earlier. But we're gonna strap this down and we're gonna bring it down. All right guys, so our Highlander is tied down. Now, because I have a 75 foot stinker, I have to slide out my fifth wheel, which is right there, to give me more room, okay? If I had an 80 foot stinker, I wouldn't have to do that. So let me show you guys how I do that. Hey guys, it might be a little dark, but this is what we do. First thing is first, we turn off our PTO, which is our power turn off. Where is it? It's right here. That is what helps us move our, our um, hydraulics to maneuver our cars on the truck. And then we're gonna pull our trailer brake. All right, I'm gonna put my, my foot on the brake. I'm gonna turn this button on right here. Fifth wheel slide, baby. Okay, we are going forward. So what is this? what this is gonna do is, it um, keeps our trailer in place while we move our tractor. So I'm gonna drive forward. See, now I'm yanking on it. There we go. Put my, put my foot on the brake. Turn that off. Pull that out. Go in neutral. Push that back in. And we're good. So as you guys can see,
Okay guys, so right now we are setting the deck. When you are setting your, the deck, you're pinning it in the same hole on both sides. There's a hole right here on the trailer. You count from that hole where you pinned it and then whatever, how many holes it is on one side, you pin it on the other side. That is so when you brand the deck down, after you pin it, it'll stay in that position. Your deck won't move at all while you are in transit. So you always wanna set your decks because how you set your deck is how you're going to be looking when you go down the road. You set your decks to make sure you are under 14 feet. And um, yeah, so it's the same as pinning your decks. Only thing is, after you pin it, you are, you are moving the decks down on the pins. And you are now setting the deck. So yeah, you see the hole. I'm counting how many holes it is. Yeah, I think that was about four holes. And then after that, we are going to move this up and down. And just to make sure, when you are moving these decks up and down on top of cards, you also want to make sure you have a fist and some air in between the cards. I will show you that here in a second, but this is how we set our decks. But you see that space between the card and the lever right there that I'm pointing to? You want to make sure you can put your fist through there and stick it up and down. Always pay attention to how much space you have between your truck and the trailer. If you do not have enough space, if you cannot fit your bar between that space, nine times out of ten, you are going to pinch your cars. Meaning, when you make a turn, your cars are going to crunch and you don't want that. So, just pay attention to that. Alright guys, another tip for you so i'm gonna be loading a tacoma right here right it is a relatively big vehicle when you are loading big vehicles here you want to pull this out let me show you i don't know how good you guys can see it but there's a handle right here right so what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift up this flipper and you're gonna pull the handle okay what that does is it brings the cars back and down a little bit which is why you only want to flip this out when you have like a pickup truck or like a big ass suv or something like that whenever you have a car or a minivan you do not want to do that because that the deck will end up hitting the frame the car's frame will be sitting on the trailer when you lift it up. And you don't want that to happen. So we want to pull these out so that it brings the height down in the back. I know this is a lot of information, but I'm just trying to help y'all out. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to help you out. I'm going to, I'm going to go get this pickup truck and uh, let's load it up. All right, guys, the light is beaming because I have the pickup truck in front of me. So I actually have to end up um, backing up my Corolla a little bit more because my pickup truck wasn't really gonna fit. I thought it was, but it's not. I have to back this car up a little bit. So let me show you something cool. You can always use your backup camera when you need to back up a little bit more. So I know it's so I know it's red right here, but you really want to pay attention to this and this. Okay, so we're gonna back up. Oh, sorry, I put it in neutral. So we're gonna back up, okay? And we're gonna see how close we can get. You wanna keep that foot on the brake, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna back up a little bit more. It's okay to get close, just you don't want it too close. All right, we're gonna leave it right there. Oh, you really have to pay attention to how much space you have between the car okay and i'm trying to get this tire right here okay and we didn't have enough space for that but we should have plenty of space now this is how much space we have it is a little tight but we'll be all right. You just really have to be mindful of what you throw on your truck and how you want to load it because obviously 
I cannot load three tundras up here. You have to fit it accordingly. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and strap off everything and show you the rest. And guys, let's go back to where we were talking about the flipper. This is what I mean. Since the flipper is out, the tire is gonna be down more. So that brings down the height of the car. And everything is strapped down really tight. We are now gonna lift up the trailer. So, when lifting this up, you use three levers, okay? You use 10, which is the front, 12 is the middle, and 13 is the rear. Now, when you are lifting up your trailer, you really want to pay attention. You don't want to just lift one all the way up, and then the next one all the way up, and then the next one all the way up. Let me show you. So we're going to lift up the middle, right? You have to pay attention to how far you lift it up because if you lift it too far up, you could bend your frame. You're going to damage your car because you're basically kind of like splitting it in half. And then also, if you have cars that are like really too close to each other, that one's fine. But if you have like a car right here and then a car right here and you only got this much space in between, you want to be careful how you lift up your um, trailer because if you lift it up too much on one side, it could touch the other car and you don't want that to happen. All right, guys, our top deck is all the way up. We are now going to pin everything so that we don't risk anything falling. And then we're going to load the bottom. At the bottom, I'm going to have a Corolla, a Highlander, a Corolla. I'm going to show you why I like to load my biggest vehicles right here in number eight. Oh, if I didn't mention already, when you are loading these type of trucks every position has a number so at the top is one the rap is two highlander is three four five six seven eight nine those are your reference points when you are loading your truck okay but i'm going to tell i'm going to show you guys why i like to load my biggest vehicles in eight especially if i have like all sedans or something but uh, i'm gonna unbuckle everything and i'm gonna pin my decks and then i'll show you how we do it all right guys so whenever you're loading something in number seven right here you there's really no wrong way to load it you just really have to be mindful of what you have above that car for example the most bulkiest part of this car is facing that way right so nine times out of ten if you have like an suv down here you want the most bulkiest part to be this way because that part is that way it's like it's like a puzzle okay but i have a car i have a sedan under here so it's not really a problem also, you can use these bad boys as markings. Um, you pretty much don't want your car to go past this black line because what will happen is whenever you are turning your truck, like you're turning your tractor, it could pinch whatever car is right here. And then that's a damage. And you don't want that to happen. But I have to be really quick because my phone is about to die. So I'm going to load. And uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, right now I'm backing up my Highlander into the number eight position. And um, yeah, I will show you guys why I chose to put my Highlander here instead of a Corolla or something like that. But when you are getting out of the car that you have loaded in number eight, sometimes your door will scrape this or you can't get out, which is why you kind of want to load your biggest vehicles here if you can because nine times out of 10 is sitting up a little, your, that vehicle is sitting up a little higher and um, yeah, you'll be able to get out. So if I were to put a Corolla here, mm, I might've had trouble getting out, might. And then last but not least guys, we have this Corolla that we are putting in the number nine position. We are gonna be sliding this ramp in. This is ramp 16. 
Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell y'all. Each ramp has numbers on the trailer as well. Mine don't really show. I have an old trailer. Or old truck, I should say. But yeah, number 16, and we're just going to pull that in. So with this number nine car, however far you pull in your number 16, you want to stop your tire between here. You know what I mean? And um, you should be good to strap it. So I'm going to strap everything down and then I'm going to show you guys how I lower down everything. We're going to measure the, the load and then we're done. Always, always measure your load before you leave. Try to be under 14 feet. If you can be 13.6, that's even better. So just how I lifted up my trailer earlier, it's the same thing when going down. Just make sure you set your pin. Thanks for watching and I hope to help. Catch you next time. Bye.